Jamal Joseph. Writer, let's give it up. Jamal Joseph, writer, director, producer, poet, activist, educator, is a lifelong freedom fighter. Lifelong. He was a member of the Black Panther Party and the Black Liberation Army. He was prosecuted as one of the Panther 21. This brother's the real deal, the real deal. Now currently, he is the founder and artistic director of Impact, a Harlem-based youth theater company. He is also a professor at Columbia University. <laughs> Lastly, he is a member of First Corinthian Baptist Church. Yeah. So join me in giving a hometown welcome to Professor Jamal Joseph. Power to the people, brothers and sisters. And let's be clear, when the Panthers would say power to the people, they would then go on to explain that that means black power for black people. That it means white power for white people. Brown power for brown people. Red power for red people. Yellow power for yellow people and revolutionary power to all freedom fighters. <laughs> Dr. Cornell West, Professor Carl Dix. I say that because this brother is a professor of revolutionary struggle and commitment. We thank these brothers for being on the forefront of building this movement of mass resistance that we must have, but also understanding the value of building a coalition so that when we look around, it looks like all power to all the people like we have here tonight. Um, if we have any ESPN fans in the house, you ever saw their documentary series, 30 by 30? You all know those great sports doc? Applaud if you've seen that. You know, they, they deal with sports and they deal with all that. Um, so as a filmmaker, I'm thinking for, um, for Cornell and Carl, we should do something called 60 for 60. Yeah. Brothers in their 60s bringing back the spirit of the 60s. Yeah. Okay, I teach film at Columbia. I'm a full professor there, uh, so that's my area. But allow me just to do a little history. I want to read something from the New York Times. A state judge yesterday dismissed a manslaughter indictment against a police officer who killed a woman with two shotgun blasts after being called in her apartment for a dispute. The judge, acting Justice Vincent A. Vitale of State Supreme Court, ruled the evidence was legally insufficient to indict the officer, Stephen Sullivan, for manslaughter and any other offense in the death of the woman, a black woman, a grandmother, Eleanor Bumpers. After reviewing testimony from a grand jury voted an indictment in September for second degree manslaughter, Justice Vitale said the officer, Sullivan, followed existing police department guidelines when he fired twice at the 66-year-old bumpers. In other words, there was an indictment that he threw out. Allegedly, she attacked him with a kitchen knife. I want to read ahead. In an interview yesterday, after the ruling, the officer said, I'm very happy, very ecstatic. Asked if, under similar circumstances, he would again shoot, he replied, yes, I would. The date of this is April 13, 1985. 
In 1973, a 10 year old boy named Clifford Glover was shot to death by police for carrying what they believed was a gun. It was an Afro pick. And if we go back a little bit further, August 1943, right here in Harlem, a brother coming home from World War II was shot to death by a white police officer. And Harlem rioted for two days. The history lesson is to say that nothing has changed in terms of state violence and state terror. There has been resistance. And of course, we think about Deacons for Defense and we think about the Black Panther Party policing the police. But nothing has changed in the way that our black and brown boys, men and women, in this case our grandmothers, our girls being slammed on the ground with no respect for the humanity. Well, this infers that we're dealing with a state that considers us to be human, brothers and sisters. Human beings do not treat other human beings like dogs. Slavery, which built this country, built it because it was free labor and people got rich. They got rich off the slave trade. Lloyds of London made their first millions from the slave trade. The first stock traded was usually the using stock on slave trade. But there was a marketing strategy because if you can picture slaves behind me and picture me as a, uh, as a white uh, merchant trying to sell slaves, I looked out often at people who called themselves Christian and they had problems with the idea of slavery because some passages of the Bible said you shouldn't enslave another human being. And the marketing strategy was simply this. Men and women of good Christian faith, I believe in the good book as well. I'm a Christian and I know what it says about slavery. But I'm saying to you that these black bodies that you see behind you, these Africans, these niggas are not human. So owning them is no more a crime than it is owning a horse or a cow or a chicken. And so this idea that we are property is something that we have to wrestle with the ideology. The idea that lives are not valued, the idea that this state justice is here because police are not here to protect us, they're here to protect property. And so we have to engage this idea of challenging that notion. We have to engage this idea, this insanity that makes the young men and the young women in this room at risk when they step outside of the door. It is insane. It is crazy. We are in insane asylum. But here's what we're saying. On October 22nd and 24th, the inmates are about to take over to the asylum. <laughs> Sweeping and dynamic change is going to come. Because from this night, we spread forward and we show the police, we show the state, we show state violence that we are human, that we indeed have, brothers and sisters, all power to the people. Okay.